Yeah, good times. I just bought Rhonda a new car because we couldn't wait for the Bronco. Yeah. I bought a, a Ford Explorer ST. Guess what I got in the email today? Your car will be ready. Is being no way. Yes, I knew it too. But I made a deal with the dealer that if I bought it, you know, I'd lose the taxes and he'll take it back for the same cost. He made, he made a deal with the devil. Yeah, he, he, he'll take it back for what I paid for it, minus the taxes. Yeah, that's a decent deal. Not bad. He'll probably sell it for more than I paid for it, that's for sure. Ben, your new hairdo is tight. <laughs> Very. Yes. yes, yes, that it is. I was, I was feeling, bone. I was feeling need need of a change. I think it looks pretty good. Some people, some people have better bald heads than other ones. Mine is fucking hideous. I won't do it. Uh, <laughs> Thank God, my I wife still has have been hair. trying to convince me that mine is not on the uh, positive side. But well, I, no, you I wear it, it well, Ben. You I think it looks it well. good. Yeah, I, I agree. It. it looks like someone who finally made a decision. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Get exactly. you and Dearson in the room, you guys will be twins. Yeah, there you go. Well, and a lot of people in our industry nowadays. Yeah, yeah true. Yeah. I guess as long as you don't show your arms, Ben. Exactly. Yeah. So, what's going on? I did something exciting today. I bought tickets to a Broadway show. Yeah, I mean, a show. I'm going to see Hades Town next Wednesday. Excellent, great show. I'm hoping Andre DeShields is in it. I really want to see him. He has good attendance, I believe. Well, you know, it's matinee day. I'm hoping if he only does one show, he does the night one and not the day one, but who knows? Yeah. He's what, 75 or something? He has That's more energy than any three of us on this call, believe me. I would believe that. The last time I saw him <clears throat> was in The Wiz. That's how long <laughs> no. ago it's been. <laughs> A mere 46 years ago. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. <laughs> well, it's been a while. Well, I mean, seen him on stage. I've seen him at parties, but that's another another story. How's everybody? Excellent. Awesome. Uh, Bob, you have like the worst internet in the world. In here, so I thought I'd say hi. Look at Bob Harmon's face right now. Yeah, well, it's that... It's, it may not be the internet, you know, it's that blurred background crap and like if the processor and whatever computer he's using. No, no, it's his internet. Enough. It's Is internet, it? yeah. It's his internet. Okay. Yeah. It's like oh. a bad science fiction artwork. No, isn't, but isn't that the video tearing from the blurred background? No, oh, whatever. I don't fucking know. Yeah. That's worth a try. Hold on. Yeah. No, that's Bobby, not it because the audio it. isn't even syncing. No. Hey, Claudette. Happy Thanksgiving. Did you do something fun? Not a whole lot. Eat, <laughs> drink. <Isn't> that <laughs> That's kind of the point, right? Marsha, Marsha, you'll get a kick out of this. I went to 2J's Deli for uh, Thanksgiving dinner on Monday night. <laughs> <For> sandwich? <laughs> nice. No, no. I had I they, they, 2J's makes a full turkey dinner. Oh, I mean, that's it's, right. it's relatively shitty, but it was better than no turkey dinner. So, and I wasn't, I wasn't going to make it. Fair. Yeah, you but. know, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have blamed you if you had gone with the pastrami either. <laughs> yeah. No, it, was, it, it was Thanksgiving for us. You know, it, it was, uh, I can pretty much guarantee well, two things. One, we were the only people in there eating turkey dinner. And two, we were the only people in there without a coupon, <laughs> which was, <laughs> was pretty funny. <laughs> people don't go to 2J's without a coupon, apparently. So every single person, and you know, I'm kind of cheap. So that drove me nuts. I was like, what do you mean mm. we can't use a fictitious coupon? Well, you can't just make one up, sir. <laughs> what about them? Where'd they get theirs? <laughs> Oh, right, Ben. Questions. So thank you. I got rid of the blur the blurred background. Seems to help. There you go. Um, there you yeah, go. It was, it's it's video tear. It's you know, whatever. It's well, a there coincidence. You, you need a better computer. That's true. I'm waiting till Monday or so. Monday or so. What Why because you get to do a show on Sunday or something? Uh no, the new MacBooks come out. And I am so sell on, oh. sell on Sunday. Went on mm -hmm. Sunday, buy on sell on Monday. I forget how that works. 
new MacBooks come out on Monday? Yeah, the, well, the big announcement is is happening on Monday with the new uh, M M one X chip. I thought yeah, they had an M two chip coming out. Right? Um, I think they stopped it at an interim to make the power buds. Ah, uh, right. I haven't God. been here in a few weeks, but if we've transitioned to MacBook processors, we've really run out of lighting topics, huh? That's true. <laughs> well, it's because you manufacturers aren't coming out with anything new anymore. You know, you oh, that's cut, not true. You've cut your R and D budgets to zero. Oh, don't even start with that. <laughs> now, now for that bit of trivia, what uh, what lighting desk was Mac Mac based? You know, one was Mac based, but that was pre pre icon. I, well, oh, I mean, Chris, you got it. Icon, yeah. of course. Yeah, I, we did. We did a show, George Michael. <laughs> 80s and they had their icon desk and okay. they all they had a problem with the board and they went into the back room and they had like security guards all around nobody could see the inside and, and it uh, still crashed every time so don't say it's pc based that thing crashed as well all the time now I also I mean, what was that? go ahead sorry no no i'm trying to remember richard bleasdale software that we used to use with the artisan didn't that run on a mac or did that run on an amiga yes, which that, is even uh, i don't know if the artisan was it? ran on a mac but i'm i, I know oh, was it lennox was, was it run on lennox no no you had that oh, you had oh. the you had the computer that ran that triggered the console with midi yeah the bleasdale stage manager thing and i think that was a mac if i remember all correctly. of the uh, early verilite stuff ran on mac that was where yeah. i got in verilite vl1 all that early right. shit was mac i don't know what happened after like the third generation but the early stuff was all mac based yeah back at that that age everybody was trying lennox so to see if it would help so but now we uh, it didn't help am i recalling depeche mode with some of the early movers, they didn't have rotating gobos, so they shot all the moving lights straight down and just rotated the head. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. works. Same idea. That works. Yeah. Does speaking of consoles, does anybody? This was just uh, brought up to me today, <laughs> and I hadn't seen it previously. But does anybody remember seeing a Lighting Dimensions article, Martin Max's hoax uncovered? That was no. written by that was written by uh, John Featherstone. It's absolutely hilarious. Mm -hmm. It's got a picture of uh, of an ETC console, an Express 250 console, and it says, "In this exclusive picture, exclusively published in this Lighting Dimensions exclusive uh, from the McDonald's owner operator meeting in Orlando, it can clearly be seen that this Max is, is in fact an ETC Express 250. And speaking to the reporter, the production electrician for show, Yef Janssen, many names have been changed to protect privacy, said we flipped the lid of the console for looking for t-shirts and were astounded to find an elaborate arrangement of wheels, levers, spring, and rubber bands attaching the buttons, faders, and those weird track things on the Maxis to the Express. I mean, it's hilarious. Like, I'll that's post it in. Uh, so it, it goes on and on. They call uh, what does he call PRG? Reduction pre-source gripe. So what did they? Uh, what was that when like? Uh, listen April to the listen September. to this line. When asked about the next moves, Mister Wise Person said, mm -hmm. "It seems Martin have ne have again changed the market. So we are today announcing right. the whole hog infinity times a million. It is two ETC obsessions in a large new case powered by a 75 horsepower John Deere lawn tractor. Yeah. You don't need a remote. The console is the remote. Fire it up, <laughs> drive, baby, drive. Oh, and there goes the weekend. Yeah, that must have been the April issue, huh? I, I don't know. It just yeah, says April 2000, 2004, Prime Media Business Magazine. It doesn't say what issue. Um. For it's got sure prints. It's got prints on the cover. Prince and a woman. I can't see who it is because it's a PDF. Hang on, I'll try and drag it in. Uh, a link you can throw it in the chat. Don't get too technical on me here, woman. Hey, you're the sorry. you're the you're the marketing internet guru, right? You're re really, Mr. Internet himself. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Internet himself. Many would argue with you. There you go. There's the article. <laughs> There's the article. 
where the hell is everybody? We used to get Thank like freaking 70 people on these calls and now we get you yeah, jobs, knuckleheads. Well, everyone was unemployed then. Well, look, That's either they're true. working or uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Happy. I'm still unemployed. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bob, Bob gets all dressed up and showered, puts a nice shirt on for this call. You know, it's just nice to get out of the house for a minute. Bob, is it improved in Hawaii at all? Um, you know, there, there, there's been some movement, but uh, the biggest pushback came from the University of Hawaii fans for football. Uh, they basically had just begged for a thousand people of fans and family to attend the games because it was the only college game that we have nobody in the stands. Mm. And they got a lot of criticism. You know, if you can't figure out how to get a thousand people who are vaccinated, who are willing to test, who won't eat anything in a 9,000 seat place. And so they, they just unleashed that this week. Uh, so now, now to all of their venues, gosh, you guys can do concerts now, as long as it's a 50% capacity or a thousand, whichever is less. Well, and, and dot, dot, dot. you know, you're, you're, you're not in the dark. So you are seeing what's going on at other college games and pro oh, games. Yeah. And well, no, hockey it's, and you know everything else that's out there, right? No, there's that that black and white Indian thing that comes up whenever those games are broadcast. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> like China. You can't use Google anymore or whatever, right? I I went. To, is the uh, is the hospital system there particularly fragile? Like, what is what it's, is the it's concern? Not anymore. I mean, honestly, we watched. Uh, you know, our, our governor tell us once 70 percent of the people get vaccinated, we're you know, I'm going to end this thing. It'll be over. And uh -huh. then then it was oh, the Delta is just a different animal. You know that it's gonna, mm -hmm. our, our scale is much, much higher uh, now. And uh, so we stand at a, uh, those above 12, 83 percent now. OK. And, and, and now it's um, well, there's still 400,000 people that haven't had their second shot here. And then they then last week was pretty dismal, and we had to go on strike basically, and mm. ran down the streets because last week he basically started going. You know what? We're going to stop publishing metrics and numbers because everybody else is trying to second guess me, right? Mm. Yeah. And then you know, they, I it, it's getting so <laughs> weird, you know, because like I I saw yesterday, and it was on the BBC, it wasn't on Fox, but I saw it yesterday that. 70% um, of people dying, I think it was 71 or 72% of people dying of COVID in the UK are vaccinated. No. Yes. That certainly doesn't match the numbers That's here. That's a big number. Go that look for it. certainly doesn't match the numbers here, right? Go look Why for it. We got to look for it. Why I'll, I'll post something I'll, that actually shows evidence of whatever. I will. I will. Know. I'll send it to you. I mean, don't don't insinuate I'm lying. I did see it on the BBC. I'm not okay. making this I mean, shit up. So I promise I saw it. It's mathematically impossible. Sorry. Well, I mean, they they all could have been over 92. You know, who knows? Remember, they also had that inferior vaccine. Right? I'm joking. No, I mean, I'm the, joking. the nice the nice thing about the UK, I will say, is that they actually are reporting real numbers and they are reporting real medicine and real data as opposed to our politically divided nation here that. You know, we're posting two different sides of everything, you know, oh, there's nothing. Oh, it's everything. Everyone's dying. No one's dying. You know, over there, they just tell you how many people are dying. Yeah, they're pretty messed up over there, too. They, they're uh, they are messed up, but I, they're, I mean, from what I've seen, and I'm not trying to make a bold statement, from what I've seen, they appear to be telling the truth a little better than we do. Now, on, on the office, okay, so on the UK government site. In England, between January 2nd and July 2nd, there were 51,000 deaths, 640 occurred in people who were fully vaccinated. Oh, this was this was a more recent report. It came out like last week or something. All right, I'll, so I'll share it with you because I don't want to be a propagandist or whatever you call people who spread bullshit. <laughs> but I did see it yesterday on the BBC, and it did clearly say, say that 70% uh, of people dying or died or whatever it was in the UK um, <laughs> were fully vaccinated. Mm. I'm sure it's got to do with um, with Delta, right? Because Delta doesn't seem to care whether you're vaccinated. Well, no, it's got to do with it. If it's if it's factual, it's got to do with somebody pulling some narrow slice of statistics that means nothing. I also well, think it. I also think it's a comorbidity thing that they're not mentioning, but you know. 
Yeah, I don't think so, but we'll you see. don't think that? I'll, no, no, I'll go find it. I'll go find it. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Well, hello. Hi, Matt. Hi, Matt. Hi, Matt, hello. who never comes to see us since he's got a girlfriend. No, that's oh. not it. I've been I've been gigging. Now I'm now I am ungigging. So now you have me again. You're welcome. Are you in the city next week? Yes, I am. Cool. I'll uh, get in the over the weekend. I know. Yeah, I just opened a pretty big uh, show that Christy Lights helped me with. That's the show. Uh, it's called Masquerade. It's a uh, Basically, a musical portrait of Andrew Lloyd Webber through his music. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard about this. Yeah, just uh, we opened up at White Plains and it uh, turned out great. Looks beautiful and photos coming soon. It does look very nice. Thank you, Chris. And thank you for our uh, meeting today. That was fun. We love when people come to visit us, that's for sure. We miss people visiting us. <laughs> Does that give you like, you know, carte blanche on sushi? Exactly. I mean, we did. No, we don't do carte blanche on sushi. We, we, did, we did go get some Japanese today, so that was good. There's he, a surprise. He, he had a bowl. He had the bowl of meat. I had the bowl of meat. It was really good. Bubbly. And Diane's here. I haven't seen her in a while. Maku. What? Yeah, I'm a little bit of a human today. I know. Hi, Diana. How's How it going? Been? Uh, a little worn out, but um, <laughs> I got a couple of days of human, and then and then I go into the crazy again. Okay. Are you working on? Worn out. Uh, I'm moved into Radio City, um, so oh, I'll be there for a few weeks, and then I'll also <laughs> be in Bryant Park on some of those overnights, which is a really unpleasant schedule. Is uh, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, I'm working with Miles again on doing the Rockefeller Ice Rink. That comes oh up. Oh my God. Yeah. It's a lot of construction over where you are. Maybe you can spy and tell me what's going to happen with that. Oh, no. They're they're ripping everything out. They're redoing the whole rink area. Yeah. It didn't exactly look like it was going to be done in time, but uh, sure. They said, they said they wanted us to start working on stuff by middle to end of October, and I don't know how they're going to be ready. But. I don't they have like three weeks to get the tree in and rigged before they have to start fixing it up? I don't know. They're, it's literally, a, they've demoed most of that under, you know, where the, the blue bottle was and yeah. all that stuff down there underground, that's all been blown out. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I don't know I what they're doing with my... the, I don't know what they're doing with the do the the sculpture there. I think they're going to keep it. I would hope they would keep it, but I would hope so. It's like landmark. Yeah. I have a tree that's in my driveway that's gotten quite enormous, and I'm hoping that it will qualify as a Rockefeller Center Christmas tree one year. Ooh, I think that would be very cool. Um, I think it has to be like 65 uh, feet or some such. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Flights are pretty cheap from. Uh, from yeah, hundred bucks to Vegas. As Holy cow. Have you, so you bought? Is this your LDI ticket, Bob, or is this something uh, No, else? this is actually if you were to fly today, or uh, it's it literally, uh, it's a special that went on ten minutes ago. If you for take sure. a today flight on United, it, you can book a ticket for a hundred bucks today. That's crazy That's to me that it's it's a hundred percent more if you fly on a Friday. Right. Better than. What? Crazy. We we're just booking flights for Seattle, Minnesota, and New York, and I got all the all the uh, you know each way 138 bucks. Wow! Yeah, I, just, I just booked a flight to. I'm doing a corporate with another designer, Nick Gray, a UK designer, in October, and I booked a flight to Miami from New York direct. It was 140 bucks round trip. <laughs> round trip. Jesus. With, uh, with upgrades for 119 on Delta. Not bad. Not bad at all. It's cheap. Yeah, we'll see how long that lasts. Well, I'm very curious because they're saying with the gas prices going up, the jet fuel will go up, but I haven't seen it. 
can just buy a lot of jet free. fuel. <laughs> I thought the price of a one-way ticket between Fort Lauderdale and Vegas, our weekend of LDI was ridiculous. Over $350 one way. That's crazy. Even like the best seat with an upgrade, just like a seat seat. You know, actually, I, I yeah, I wonder how much of that. I wonder, um, you know, NFL weekend, like Vegas, you know, when it's NFL season, right? Or expensive. I don't know. Conversely, <laughs> on Tuesday, the flight was like so cheap. It, it was stupid cheap. It was cheaper to go in two days earlier and get a cheap hotel for a couple of nights than it was right. to fly in on Thursday at like three times the price. Uh, yeah, it's good to keep checking too, because the prices did drop over the last week. Agreed. Yeah. So as, as a Raiders fan, that's the, we just lost our coach. Indeed oh, you yeah. did. Oh my gosh. Yes. Boy. There was a lot of people at their training facility on Monday, our, our neighbors, you know, so the parking lot, the guys were having a hard time getting into CT. There was a lot of people there. Where's that, Chris? Henderson. Henderson okay. on Raiders Way. Okay, that's where the uh, uh, practice is. Yeah, they're next, right next door to us. Sometimes it's good. That time it wasn't. I think they're going to come back strong this week. This week, though, they kind of have to. Can't do any worse. No, not in the last two games, but also, you know, when they started hearing about all this was going to come out. Yeah. They heard on Sunday, they found out the week before, but they thought it would blow over. No, no blown over. Uh, no, did not happen. Not anymore. So there's a whole separate discussion going on here in the chat. So what is this? Anne posted something. Yeah, that's good two things she put in and Chris, put back in June. Fact check on what you were saying. Oh, the fact check. Um, the, what I was saying came from, comes from the UK coronavirus website because they showed it. I just, I yeah, no, there, quickly. There's a whole thing about that. It's a false. Oh, is there? Yeah, it's a false article. Oh, okay. That's why but it was, posted. I'm positive it was BBC and I, don't know them to typically be like that, right? But maybe no, they did. No. I mean, I found a chart from the BBC that I threw up somewhere in the chat that clearly shows. Those were not the numbers. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it probably is down to spinning dates or whatever to make right. it look yeah. however you want it to look or something. But I mean, the bottom line is like, I've had it with the vaccine. I know a shit ton of people. I know way more people who have it with the vaccine than than without um, over the past, let's say, 60 days. Because well, so you I, probably just know more vaccinated people, right? What, again, what's the sample? That's the bottom what's, line. What's the slice? No, that's well, that's the interesting part. Like if, if for example, if the UK is 85% vaccinated or whatever the number is, there's a very good chance that a very high percentage of people dying from COVID have the vaccine. I mean, I and it's just based much, on numbers. I, I think that's pretty much what the second article Ann posted was saying is essentially just because of it's the- It's a numbers thing. Yeah. yeah. It's a number. Yeah. I mean, let's say let's say 100% of people in America get vaccinated. You could then say 100% of people who are dying with COVID are vaccinated. It, it's sort of a bad, you know, it's a, yeah, a the, misrepresentation. The headline would grab attention and then the, then the yeah. facts would, you know, yeah. that's where you are. Marsha, do you have a, do you, sorry, go ahead. Go on. What, Ben? No, I was going to say, Marsha, do you have to wear a mask next week when you go see the show? What are the rules? Uh, I, have not I have to be vaccinated yeah. and I think a mask as well. I don't remember. Yeah. You do. A couple of things I agreed to. You do. I, think I, just to go I know see I had Hades. to be vaccinated yeah. and I am and I've had my booster, so I'm... Yeah. Yeah. Good I'm going to see know. Hades Town tonight. For the yeah, second I, time. Are you going I, to see it tonight? Yeah, I saw it. Oh, on I'm Sunday. seeing it next Wednesday. Yeah, right. is it Wednesday? I, saw it, I saw it Sunday, and you just had to show there was a line, a queue before you went in that mm -hmm. checked your vaccination and checked your ID. And you had to wear a mask the whole show. And you have to wear a mask in the performance, right? Yep. Yeah, yes. they have yes. like. If you go and get a drink at the bar, you can take a sip, take it off, take a sip, put it back. 
you know, that's yeah, like normal. You know, it, yeah. So I went, I went to uh, it's Alice like being Cooper. on a plane. I went to Alice Cooper and Ace Freely on the weekend, or what day was nice. it? Sunday. And it's funny right. because they they ask for your no, it was at uh, the shed right up the road here. Coral some Sky cool pictures, Marcel. Yeah, some and, nice cool um, pictures from that. But but it's funny showing your vaccine card when you're going in, and I'm thinking. You know, the very first time I saw Alice Cooper was with my sister and it was at a stadium in Calgary and I was like 12 years old. And I think they were just checking you for a bong at the door. Like if you had a bong, you can't bring a bong in, you know, but you can bring anything else in, knives, guns, you know, yeah. drugs, whatever you want, but just don't bring a bong, right? And now they're yeah. checking you. But it was weird because, and again, this might be political, it might be just a coincidence, but they said that, uh, I was talking with David Davidian and he said the sales in Florida have been terrible. Um, oh. Like terrible, terrible. And, you know, looking at the crowd there, it, it was pretty disgusting. But uh, he scared? said in Florida, it's been bad. Everywhere else, it's been good. And, and I wonder that if that's, is? no, I was going to say, I wonder if that's because Alice Cooper has forced, you know, you got to be vaccinated um, on the crowds. I don't know. Like, is that a political pushback or something? I don't know. Like, I have no uh -huh. idea, but it's just weird that AEG and Live Nation. Isn't I, mean, it? I, I mean, I, I don't have to, I guess you have to compare it to other concerts in the same region that well, also have vaccinated I mean, to, to, versus to, ones that don't. I was I, talking to Wiseman about it, and Wiseman said that Alice Cooper just doesn't belong in a 15,000 seat venue. He should be doing theaters and he'd be selling them all out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I ran a Tesla show um, that they were opening for uh, Leonard Skinner at the amphitheater in Mansfield, and it was sold out. Uh, yeah, packed. Yeah, uh, same deal though. They were. Oh, that's the same crowd. I mean, the yeah. same sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. age group and <laughs> stuff. You would think. And it was actually it was really interesting. The crew. So you had to be vaccinated to be on the crew, but every stagehand or personnel that went backstage had to be tested, and they had a rapid antigen test at uh, at the stage at the gate. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyone yeah. hear something interesting? Yes. So tomorrow I go in and I get, uh, I've joined the, the variant study. So I go in tomorrow and I get a booster for the Pfizer vaccine and a booster for the variants. Hmm. So be, are you, are uh, you just trying to get rid of the rest of your hair or what are you doing, Chris? Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> gonna turn it all white. Trying to so shock it all out. This is how you become a witcher. Uh, have you not read the <laughs> books? Like this is the evolution into becoming a witcher. You have to inject all these drugs into your body and make yourself stronger. Thanks. And better. Thanks for being a guinea pig pincushion for the rest of us. You know, and <laughs> and uh, you know, hopefully we'll end up safe because of your. Uh, there's, there's three different variants that they're adding into the boosters for testing. Uh, and uh so, so what does that I'm, mean you're getting a different vaccine or you're actually getting injected with a little bit of disease or a virus or whatever it's called no so what i'm getting uh, so basically the current vaccine is is an rna to tell your cells to create right. an antigen that links to the outside of the virus right right so the new the new booster will be more of that and some <laughs> rna for each one of the exteriors of the new variants. Yeah. And then they'll test- so That's a different formula, same thing, different formulation. Correct. For my, for my simple brain. Yeah. So, 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 why, they, so why are Sorry. they giving you both? Uh, because they, they want to see if it's a more effective booster against what's out there than what they're currently giving. So how do they test that when they're already giving you uh, a, a third dose of Pfizer, then you're getting another, you know? So, I mean? so some people will just, there, there's a group already that has already gotten just the Pfizer booster. And those are people who are, mm. so I'm still in the original study too. So I'm part of that study. I will then migrate over to this small study within the study. So 1200 of us are moving into this new part of the study where we get 
Is it blind? Do you know if you are in fact getting this three? We are definitely three. getting it. No, it's not. So blind is when they give two different groups, two yeah. different things. They know, they already have a group that has the control and now we're a subgroup that will have an additional uh, group of uh, mRNA in there. You know how long uh, on this before they get some data? Was it like six months or so? I mean, they'll track us. They track us for another year and a half, where my original study would have gone out in two years. So I was like a year and a half in. So I'll be extended for another like year and a half. So, so and probably will they next. tell you what your antibody levels are at? No, like they tell you nothing. They they take your blood, and they. Uh, you know, and if something happens to you, they'll take care of you. Great. <laughs> I don't know. Thank you for being the guinea pig, so I don't have to. <laughs> I'm being a guinea pig to get us out of this quicker. You know, that, I keep telling people there's one way out of this whole thing. And uh, it's through vaccines and science. That's it. That, those I are appreciate patients. you being a guinea pig too, man. Uh, but, Otherwise, uh, we wouldn't be here. I got a booster already, so that was cool. Yeah, so that'll re-up your antibodies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was right. just about eight months, almost eight months out, so I was glad to get it up here uh, a couple weeks ago when I was in Woodstock. I had to go to Woodstock, but that was fine. Nice drive. Yeah, it's not bad. Hey, Claudette, I don't know about you, but up here on my mountain, fall fell. <laughs> All my trees are bare, practically. Already? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. We haven't had a leaf turn in New York yet. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. my mountain, a little piece of the Arctic right up here in New York State. Yeah, they're wow. saying it's because it's been so rainy and overcast <laughs> that the leaves aren't. It's going to be 78 degrees tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, here, in yeah. here in New York. Sorry, I should have yeah. added that. Okay. There's no such thing as global warming. Uh, it's cold. It's colder in Vegas than it is at your place. Then <laughs> it was snowing in Colorado yesterday. For God's sakes, it was 76 in Vegas today. Wackadoodle. Nice. Did anybody else pick up on that? Uh, that DARPA announced today that they uh, their their AI program now can learn 390 percent faster than last a year ago today. Right. The same group that, that announced in January or February that they were able to develop uh, two robots that were able to build a third. So not only can they replicate, but they can outthink you now. Uh-oh. Well, that, that's not that shocking, is it? That's Skynet. been coming for a while. <laughs> online soon. Skynet. So, Skynet. I'll tell you what. Skynet. I'll tell you what. It's funny, but along the same lines. So a friend of mine who is a former NBA basketball player, and now he's a motivational speaker. He speaks for like people's conferences and stuff, right? His name is Walter Bond. But he reached out to me today on Instagram and goes, hey, Marcel, how you doing? Haven't talked to you in a couple months. And I go, yeah, I'm good. How are you, Walter? And he says, yeah, I'm very good. Have you been investing in Bitcoin? And I'm like, well, you know, remarkable that you say that because for the very first time, I actually went and bought some Bitcoin just a couple of weeks ago, just because I said, I'm an idiot for not having ever bought any. So I just got to buy a little bit and watch it. And so I bought it. And of course, it went up by 20% right away in the first couple of days. And I was like, ooh, I like this Bitcoin thing. You know, but it wasn't enough money to matter. And then you but anyways, <laughs> so no, but so here's the thing. So then I start to realize I'm in an automated uh, AI loop thing here, a sales pitch that he has activated somewhere and it just keeps going. So now I'm tricking the sales pitch and I'm saying things to just trip it and make it say different things. And it was the dumbest, like if I posted this conversation in here, you'd laugh because I'd say the sky is purple and it would go, oh, well, that's really great. Let's then talk about this Bitcoin thing or whatever. I mean, it was just, it was so freaking ridiculous, but it was like a learning, it was a learning sales pitch thing in Instagram. Mm, and that's scary. You know, so I kept asking, hey, what software are you using? I like this. You know, what software are you using? And it wouldn't tell me, of course, because it wasn't Walter. It was some freaking machine thing. Yeah, it's not aware of it. It's, it's a bot. Like, 
yeah, it's, it's like Sean Young. She wasn't aware that she was a robot in uh, uh, in Blade Runner. Right. Yeah. 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 No, it's a bot, and and you know we have like we use HubSpot at GearSource, and we have bots that you can use that are learning, but. Uh, I don't know, this one was kind of slick until you started playing games with it. Like as long as you answered within a range of reasonable answers, it was pretty good. But as soon as you started going out into, you know, the outer world somewhere, it, it got pretty senseless. All the sales guys got to be worried we're going to be replaced with bots, huh? <laughs> I mean, I think in some cases it's already happened, you know. In so right, cases, right at the front of PRG will be the kiosk with the... Yeah. With the ordering thing, you can walk right up and be like, I want 10 Legos and yeah, I yeah, want yeah. color frames and yeah. dimmer. Yeah, like, and oh, smoke starts coming out of its head. You know? <laughs> change with that. Yeah. No, I oh, mean, yeah. uh, fortunately for us, our, our industry is so ridiculous that people aren't going to invest in that kind of software for our industry. They're just going to keep hiring us knuckleheads to sell stuff, you know? Let's hope so. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, you okay. a robot to like be a tech on one of my shows the only, the only way that i'm really going to trust it is if it can drink with me you know <laughs> if they can make a special edition like you know bottle of beer that it can that it can take down and when the, when the, when the lips of the bottle touch the you know the artificial lips then a uh, you know an algorithm goes off that dumbs down the computer a little bit till it gets a little more stupid <laughs> every every round of drinks Bob will, I liked it. Bob starts will talk, drink an AI robot. Yeah, starts talking about its robot wife, you know, in a bad manner kind of thing, you know. Oh, man. <laughs> Whatever. That sounds so, good. And then the robot asks to go to a strip bar in Marcel's tab, and then we're all good. That don't happen <laughs> anymore. Hey, did you guys see the Beatles Get Back trailer today, the official trailer? No. Oh my oh. God, it looks good. Hang on, I'll post it. It's so freaking okay. good. It yeah, is so it's good. A more, it's a more positive spin uh, than the other documentary was. Well, no, but it's just a lot of new footage that I've never seen that like Beatles historians have never seen and stuff. There's like vault footage that's that's added into it, right? It's did so you, good. Did you read that uh, Paul McCartney interview? Uh, yeah. Yeah, the it's one where he blamed so Yoko. Well, I mean, he blamed John, but yeah. Well, we know it ain't John; it was Yoko. <laughs> of course, you know. I ain't saying nothing. <clears throat> <laughs> Somebody's got to uh, take the blame, right? <laughs> behind every successful musician is an angry woman. <clears throat> there you go. Damn. I'm just kidding. It's stupid. Probably true. <laughs> just like behind every successful female songwriter is an asshole man. Probably. <laughs> or manager. <Yeah. laughs> it's probably true. I turned on something. I don't know what. Here. <laughs> I oh, know. Somebody, somebody click the link. Don't click Hang the on, damn guys. link while Sorry, you're on the I'll, call. I'll mute out. How about I'll do it for you? <laughs> that's usually quicker <laughs> yeah exactly she doesn't know she's muted <laughs> she's she's doing commentary like mouth commentary yeah she's still talking to us yeah i'm trying to find the mute <laughs> oh button, i got guys. it i hear you i just don't have the, the screen. i can't even get this the thing big anymore totally fucked up my screen can't get the ah, thing big we... anymore <laughs> No one that ever on this call. Many wrong ways. That is that no wrong. one ever on this call. <laughs> That's a whole other thing. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Didn't mean to. Keep pressing the, the button, it doesn't get big. <laughs> <laughs> Takes more than a button, Chris. I was the window, and pulling, ben. I the window ben. The window. <laughs> Don't know where That's what I love is. about this group. It only takes one misstep to get everyone down the path of hell. <laughs> and suddenly everyone's 14. There's a rabbit yes. hole. <laughs> Poopy jokes go over well here. Yes. <laughs> Especially after this week. All I have is poopy jokes. <laughs> Chris, it's, it's nice that you're not driving for once. I know. I'm still in the office. Welcome to my it's house. It's just a background. Oh, not nice. I guess it's not nice then. 
Yeah, no, it's, it, it was not a pretty week here in New York with people like in full panic mode, like I need gear tomorrow. We're what? we're getting we're getting lunch, and Chris is like, he doesn't even say hold on. He just picks up his phone mid conversation. I'm goes, like, what? What do you want? Fuck <laughs> this guy. Hey, this, let this me know. Shit's got to get onto a truck. <laughs> this freight thing's becoming a real issue. You know, like we had. Uh, I don't remember what it was, mega points or something that somebody was trying to send from Europe to the US. Um, and we were quoted, what was it, Claudette? Like $1,600 per light or something for air freight? Well, initially it was supposed, we only had an allowance of 640 <laughs> bucks or something. And a quote came in at like 16 or 1800 per, per <laughs> light. Per <laughs> light. Why? They, they ship their four in a case. Don't matter right one now. It one just don't guy, matter. There's no gear left in New York, so one production got trucking prices from California to New York to do a show in New York, mm -hmm. and for four trucks they wanted a hundred thousand oh, dollars. No way! Really? Hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. yeah, we're seeing it. We're seeing it just as well now in between companies. We finished the Thursday night football stuff for Amazon. <clears throat> so the gear was sitting in NEP's warehouse where we have the studio. And then it has to go to CT Las Vegas. They both are inside of our company. They're bitching at who was going to pay it because it was going to be $3,000 for eight cases to go to Las Vegas. Jeez. We ain't going to pay it. You're going to pay it. No, we're not going to pay it. You pay it. <laughs> it where was, was it incredible. trucking from, Chris? What? Where was it trucking from? LA. Uh, L.A. Um, to Vegas, eight cases. LA to New York was was the two tra uh, four trailers for twenty five thousand a trailer. Yeah, yes. so we're, all of us should stop yeah. what we're doing, buy a bunch of beaten up old trucks, and, and, and teach our Seriously. kids to drive, get CDL yeah. licenses for our children, and be done, man. L.A. Uh, L.A. Auto LA Show, Happy L.A. Birthday. Auto Show is going to be crazy for shipping, and nobody realizes it. <laughs> Are it's they gonna actually going to do it or are they going to postpone it like uh, New York did? No, we just did Miami, loaded in, is starting, Miami I think is starting tomorrow. What's tomorrow, oh. Thursday? Miami, we already loaded in Miami. Seattle starts in two weeks, LA, and then we come back for LA and start doing LA. We're good to go. And I got to go to New York to do something. I mean, I still, you know, I was going to say something funny, but I won't. I still don't understand the problem completely. Like, is it really down to the fact that we just don't have enough people to unload trucks? And, and we don't have the containers either. Yeah. I think it's, it's the, the gas prices, but not enough, not enough drivers. Because everyone during the pandemic was like, they don't need trucking. So they found another job. Yeah. Well, if anyone is so inclined, now is certainly a good time to get a CDL and it, be a driver. Holy but it shit, reminds me, fortune. you know, has has any of you ever driven into like a football game or something where you've got one guy who's holding up a whole stack of tickets and then the guy next to him has a sign up that says, I need tickets. <laughs> like it, it just, this is what it reminds yeah. me of sort of, you know, it's like a a weird little thing going on right now because there's a whole bunch of people who don't have jobs and there's a whole bunch of need for people over here. I don't well, get I mean, it. Like the, the jobs report in August, September, 4.5 million people quit their jobs. Yeah. What Chris, like what Chris and I were talking about is like, it's, it's, uh, it's an employee uh, economy now because they want to, there's so many jobs available now that people are quitting their jobs because they're not happy or looking for a pay raise. Yeah. People are, are just, you know, they're done with their jobs. I got in California here, so the so the docs obviously are backed up. They went through DMV, I think, to find out who had CDLs and sent out random emails. So I got an email that said, "We will pay for the truck. You don't have to pay for a truck. You don't none of the union dues, and we'll give you one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year to come work for us starting tomorrow." Damn. And they knew I had a CDL, and I'm like, "How did you get this? This is like, you know, they're kind of like using the DMV to find me." Talk to me. Yeah, yeah, and I'm like, this is crazy. But I could imagine if you had a CDL right now, you'd be, you know, and you needed a job, you'd be looking pretty good right now. Yeah, well, they showed containers too. 
Yeah, at least for a while and to, until the tables turn again. And, right. No, right. That's the thing, Chris. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. So everyone quits their job at wherever and they go and get a CDL license and they make a hundred grand for a little while. And then, you know, and then they, we have enough drivers. We don't need you. Grand. <laughs> yeah. And then they say, you're going to pay for your truck from now on. We yeah. pay for your truck. You got to pay for your insurance. And you, now you got to pay for your Teamster fees. And yeah, It ain't that long me. ago. I remember reading an article where, um, independent trucking operators couldn't survive you know based on fuel costs and what it cost to buy and operate and maintain the truck and and the rates that they were getting paid on these uh uh ltl things and stuff i mean and now all of a sudden they're <laughs> they're you know sitting on gold mines it's crazy you know a, a very good friend of mine owns pyrotechnico uh steven vitali and through the whole pandemic and and even now like one of the things that's really carried their business was, uh, was they have a trucking division because it started really small, you know, in, in fireworks and pyro, as you might imagine, it's hard to find truckers that want to carry explosives, <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a little bit challenging to find. So you gasoline, get... they, they have a lot of problem finding guys who want to drive gasoline as well. Yeah, same thing. So, you know, I mean, so they they were paying more and more money and having a harder time finding carriers who wanted to carry this stuff. So they just said, screw it, let's buy a couple of trucks. And they did. And then it became a couple more, a couple more. And, you know, now they have a trucking division that does very, very well. They're upstaging. Now they're upstaging where the trucking division does more. <laughs> exactly. <than the> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's got to be tempting for upstaging to do you know things yeah. other than tours you know to hey we could make completely, so much more carrying this shit over here we're completely booked out of trucks right now yeah, yeah one sure. of my friends called over there and he's like i need 10 trailers for a tour and they're like sorry we're oh. all out we're all booked up till next year so is in sync in vegas so is a lot of them they're 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 busy. It's gonna be it's gonna be hard to say no like that you know what i mean like i mean just like it is for you chris or for anyone it's you know, hey, I, I need a, some, I need a hundred really moving lights. I don't got them. Yeah, I, I've had brutal conversations where I might even have most of the lights, but we don't have the capacity to pull them. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm working with a guy right now who's trying to send out two Christmas-related tours, and and he can't get any of the gear he wants, and they're trying to pull from stock, but there isn't enough, and so they're <laughs> pulling from multiple shops because they're trying to get the tours to match to be you know the same. So it's real ugly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just, it's like brutal right now, as far as, you know, demand goes. It's like everybody decided to do a show at the exact same time. And every show that didn't happen also wants to happen. That was supposed to happen in the last year and a half. We shouldn't yeah. be shocked at this. We talked about this. We yeah. said, everyone's going to come back at the same time. Yep. Yeah. Well, it's wait like, until Q1 know. next year. I mean, that's just going to be batshit freaking crazy. Q1 next year, Q2 next year. I mean, it's going to be nuts because remember all these big acts that pushed off 2021 like acdc and aerosmith cosmos bands but all of these bands i mean there's hundreds of bands that beyonce and you know all these big big acts that pushed off to next year they're all going to go out at the same time right and be a lot of the ones that went out early a lot of the shows that went out early got killer deals because there was so much gear at that time yeah and so if they wanted to do the same show they did last year it's going to be double the money. And yeah. it's, exa it's exactly the same with corporate too, because we sent out stuff, you know, months ago when they canceled, now they want the same price. And we're like, you're crazy. Just the shipping alone is triple. <laughs> triple. What do you guys, does anyone have any opinions Customers. on the trade? Sorry, the trade shows that uh -huh. are coming up, Infocom, LDI. Uh, you know, I know another major manufacturer pulled out of LDI today. Who did? Uh, which... I'm not going to announce it because oh, I don't think they've announced it yet. Sorry, I can't. Yeah, I know a distributor um, that also pulled out as well. Yeah. Who did? A distributor. A distributor. Oh. No, a major, major lighting manufacturer, another one pulled out. Why? And are sales low? Are ticket sales low to this? No, no, it's not that at all. It's just when you've got I mean, a... There was a, an email. There was an email that went out that said there were only 3,500 attendee badges yeah but that's yeah. not bad considering it's going to be it's going to be sparse but it's still going to be fun i mean i'm going i i can't wait I, to go to be perfectly honest with you so. i i got hit up by a manufacturer and i'm not gonna name who that basically said you should come to ldi we have some new products we want to show you 
we'll pay for your flight and hotel. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, I don't know. That's that nice. Is. Yeah, but the, yeah, problem I mean, is, it's... <laughs> the problem is it's just, it's a manufacturer I'm not, you know, keen on, or I, oh, I haven't really used their... So you just say, you just say, you know, Matt, you just say, hey, Mr. Manufacturer, I really appreciate the offer. I'll take you up on that, but there's no strings attached. There's no guarantees. I mean, I'll come spend, that was my, I'll spend that was my two concern. hours in your booth. I'll spend two yeah. hours in your booth going through all your product. I'll meet with your sales guy. You know, I'll do everything. But, you know, I just want to let you know that I'm not promising you a show or anything. Yeah. And then you're fully covered. You know, yeah. I would I would take the offer. Why not? I yeah, mean, they also offered to send us to a European country to uh, see their factory as well. And pay yeah. for the eye stuff. Yeah. No, it's you know what it's it's interesting. Um, Infocom is much worse. Like I saw the I saw the list today from Infocom, and I'll read this to you. Give me two seconds to find I it. I actually just was going through my email and I saw the Act Lighting Infocom uh, Lighting and Sound America blast that went out. <laughs> yeah. Act. So. Act. <laughs> oh, hey Ben. In Infocom dropouts, <laughs> Infocom dropouts this week. Audio Science, Focusrite Pro, Harman, KRA, Lowell Manufacturing, Martin Audio, Matrox Video, Promark Brands, Strong. Uh, drop, dropouts last week. Adamson Systems, Audio Technica, uh, Avlex Christie, which blows me away because Christie's massive at Infocom. Um, Canadians can't go back and forth though because the whole Canadian thing, right? Or didn't they? No, they're, they're opening the border. And not until not after, not not before Infocom. Oh. Yeah. So Dan, Danley like, Sound Labs, Nutric, uh, Rupert yeah. Neve, Solid like, State I don't think Logic. Any Canadian was coming down. Uh, originally there were twenty-four audio demo rooms. Now there's just four. So yeah, I mean it's it's ugly. I mean, so I, I mean, besides being fun, do you think LDI is going to be worth it? Yeah, I yeah, it'll be fun. I, I think the less people there, the better. That's what I was like. I was at Comic Con this weekend. Sunday was like, like you could walk around, you could talk to people, you could exactly, Chris. No, you could exactly. Not be like crushed between people with thirty people waiting in the booth to speak to somebody, like. I mean, Shameless plug, go to, go to my LinkedIn and like the article that I posted a couple days ago, because it's exactly about that. It was on, I don't remember, Inc. or Fast Company or one of those entrepreneur, maybe, I don't know. But it was about exactly that. It was that trade shows are thinner, but guess what? Now you don't have to stand in line 12 people deep to talk to the sales guy or whatever, right? Yeah. So like, I, think, I think that's going to be a good thing. I don't know. I mean, to me... Most of the people on this are leaders in some way or another. And I think it's about leadership. It's about going there and waving the flag and saying, I'm here. Why aren't you here? You know, we should all be here. Is Strickland going? I would imagine. He's probably accepting an award. Is there an award? Is there an award? No, just kidding. He'll get one. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just playing. We're all going to give him an award. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was trying to find a paper here because you guys were talking about trucking. And uh, luckily, I'm one of the few companies here that actually owns my warehouse. And it's in it's in Honolulu near the oh, airport. I got to go. Uh oh. Hi, David. David. Hi, David. Okay, David. Next week. But um, yeah, it's but... going to be. It... Go ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to say, listen, I have nothing to say about LDI that's not self serving because obviously we've decided it's an important event. You know, it's like, People want to see us. Why would we hide? Like I just well, yeah, you haven't seen your customers for two years. Why wouldn't you want to see your customers? That's the yeah. only thing. To just me get ready is. for a lot of people giving, like, wondering what's going on with MA3 software. That's bullshit. That's bullshit because that the that might have been true a year ago. And yes, there will be some people, but come on, let's let let's at least be realistic about about where things are. Um, you know, it's made major strides in the last year and, you know, it's not going to, you know, if, if there had been a show last year, there probably would have been some discontent around that subject, but there certainly isn't right now. Um, 
They so, seem to be I, selling I, really well. I, I can I tell you that. Like, we're even just, selling used ones. I, I, I no, I'm not. I'm just telling you. Well. I'm just telling you what I've heard from LDs that I know that they're still running it on MA2 software because they don't. There, there, are, there are people who are still running Grandma uh, uh, Mode Two because they because they have a particular reason that they need to do that. But we're we've made huge inroads. Um, with well, with but Ben, Grandma I would say, and, you defense. know, Billy Joel. Let, let me just say, you know, Billy Joel going going up live on Grandma Three and native Grandma Three software. You know, that team's not going to make a decision to run software that's not stable, right? Sure. So anyway, sorry, Marcel. I, I, no, no, the only thing I would say in your defense is, uh, like, I talk to these people every day too, and timing was a big issue because nobody had used the MA3 software yet on a tour or on a show. They knew it was out and then boom, COVID hits, right? So it was a really funky, weird timing. And I think a lot of it is just comfort level. Like, am I going to learn this whole new thing before going out on this massive tour right now when I'm out of practice and I haven't done a show in a while and whatever, or am I going to use what I'm super comfortable with? And sure. that's, that's real yeah, and, and, and listen it. we're we're more than happy to support people who want to run mode too but I, I'm, I'm actually just sorry to sorry no, sorry no, 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 about I'm it. Not, I, and um, it wasn't it wasn't just to hitting on it i want just, you to just actually that. check because it's a really small group today um and this is a really interesting subject for to me because of the amount of money we're about to spend uh chris <laughs> i'm sure you're going to l chris mcmean i'm sure you're going to ldi chris you're on the phone marcia you're going you said yes that sounds going. Yeah, Marcel, I know you're going. Diana, I don't know if you usually go or not, if you're going I, this year. I usually can if I'm available. I'm undecided this year based on schedule. Bob? Um, gosh, if they, I, I, I get an offer for so much as a wedding, I think I have to stay behind. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what All right, I'm going to so, do is I'm going to probably go ahead do a, and book it. And every time I book my LDI experience, I get a tour. So that's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> Uh, uh, I have six rooms booked for other people already. Right. Yeah, so it's, listen, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, you know, it, it's an opportunity for us to see people. Why wouldn't we want to be there to see them? So, yeah, good. Yeah, you I know, mean, and I know, and it is a shitty company, time. And we all did, we all have had huge financial trauma for the last yeah. shit. What has it been now? 20 months? 19 but at the months, same time, like that? but at the same time, you haven't seen your customers or friends or clients or suppliers or whatever yeah. angle you're coming from in yeah. a long time. So it's it's and, all and, the more reason to go. I so, mean, we're gonna have and, more and people company, there than we've had in in a few the, years for sure. The companies that are saying they can't afford to be there, it just it's not logical to me. Like it's obvious, you know. And I get it. Like, listen, I've been running around for years saying trade shows are devalued. This is crazy. Why do we spend all this money? But I don't know. Yeah. I it's guess, not I guess it's one of those gun to the head moments. You're going to show up. Yes, we're going to show up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I good think for it you. is important for people to show up. And Marcel, to yeah. your point, yes, I think that to have even a smaller group there that may be a more intimate group, it may be a more cordial, cohesive group. You're going to get, you're going to generate sales. That's going to be a byproduct of the relationships anyways, but it's a good way to solidify ourselves within our industry and our profession. And yes, lead show others yeah, lead exactly this is like what I'm, we can do we need to pick up ourselves by our bootstraps and move forward however we do i'm gonna it. be i'm gonna be bugging all of you guys to be on podcasts while i'm there too i'm gonna re record a whole bunch of podcasts while i'm there too so promises, i mean it's promises <laughs> we will we'll do it okay so yeah um by the way before i forget to mention it just in case we're leaving soon i'm gonna do this on google meet next week instead of zoom i'm ditching zoom and um for no other reason than meat has gotten a lot better and i don't want to pay for zoom anymore so um so yeah when you get the link it'll be google meet not zoom just so you don't want to pay for the trade zoom anymore so trade something zoom. else to install <laughs> yeah, great. no you don't have to yeah. install anything it's just it's in i think it's web-based yeah it's all web-based you don't have okay. to install so anything so I, I had a Microsoft easily. Teams meeting this morning, and it only oh, took me like suck. twenty fucking minutes to get oh, ready for that. <laughs> so bad. Microsoft my Teams is awful. It's worse. The worst. Yeah. No, and and Zoom used to be the only one where you could do a video of this quality, um, yeah. but but honestly, now Meet is is just as good, and and uh, it's just easier to use when you're in that Google stratosphere or whatever. 
So do you need um, to like register and do the whole identity and online and all that nothing, shit, or can nothing. we just go to your link? Yeah, go to the link. It's easier than Zoom. It's it's well, honestly super easy. The thing, that, the thing that the thing that's blown my mind today. is the last two times I've done Zoom and I've opened a link, I haven't been prompted to download another version of Zoom. It seems like every day I open Zoom, it's like, oh, you need to download the latest update. Oh, <laughs> every like time somebody days. finds a security hole, they got to patch it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Well, I yep. I can do it from my cell phone. I'll try next week from the city. Before so Broadway. one thing I will tell you is freaking Alice Cooper is 70, whatever he is, three or four years old. God damn, he still rocked. It was so good. Like, I mean, really good. And from a theatrical standpoint, like I'm sure there's no Alice Cooper fans on here, but from a theatrical like standpoint, him. it was like really him. good. I mean, can you imagine being 74 years old and wanting to put on makeup and leather pants and go out and do that every night? I can't, but he did a damn good job. I was really impressed. Put him next to Ron Wood and Mick Jagger and see what happens. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the octogenarian tour in a couple of years. It's true. I mean, some of these guys aren't stopping. Like I was talking to David Davidian about Alice Cooper, and he said that he's booking 2023 and 2024 dates right now. I mean, mm. what the hell? <laughs> you know, that's just wild. I love it. It's great. Fantastic. Now, Madonna, on the other hand, has not aged well recently. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. Did you guys see that late night thing that she did? No. no. Does she look horrible? Which show was it? It was one of the late night shows. Uh, God, I can't remember which one it was, but she laid on the desk and oh shit, I gotta get that. It was nasty. Bye, Ben. All right. Nice to see you <laughs> all. That hurt. Chris, see have fun at the play. Enjoy. Have a good one. Bye. The musical. Madonna was I nasty. I've seen it already. I get to see it again. Matt, you're being oh. mean to Ben. I wasn't being yeah. mean to No, no, it's okay. He took a year of beatings <laughs> and some of them he deserved. I talked to Ben a lot in the background. And like, you know, when people would attack Ben, I'd call Ben and I'd go, hey, I think you need to do better training on this or this or this or this. Because sometimes it's just information. You know, sometimes manufacturers do things and they don't do a very good job with telling I mean, people why they did it or what they did. He, he's not even the manufacturer. He's a distributor. Correct. Yeah, but he's heavily invested. <laughs> heavily, no, heavily. And I'm sure. I've just yeah. heard a lot of I've just heard a lot of people saying that the way they've upgraded the hardware, it makes for muscle memory. Like your muscle memory of programming for years is yeah. out the window. Hundred percent. Well, I have another time and, to and, change consoles. But again, no, no, no. that's that's no, no, it, it's different syntax, different all kinds of things. But again, yeah. it's sort of a timing issue, right? Because there wasn't a smooth transition. You you had MA2, and then you had an 18-month break because of COVID, and then you're getting MA3 shoved down your throat, and people are going, holy shit, I don't get it. So they get yeah. pissed off, like and they go back to what they know. To get trained. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's- I said it for the last year and a half. <laughs> well, we have, we have Hubie, one of our programmers that Matt knows. He's yeah. been using it for the entire year. And he has a book that's about this thick of issues that he sees with it. Yeah. Um, and he's a he's one of the top, you know, Grand he's ME2 amazing. programmers. And uh, we've been trying to sort it to get it all situated. It's not a bad board. It just needs a few tweaks here and there. Um, but that's a few tweaks here and there of paperwork. Yeah, mm. it's a lot of shit. A lot of shit. It's so hard being a manufacturer, as you know, Chris. And I don't think anyone else here really knows it that religiously. Oh, it but sucks. I definitely it do. Sucks. Chris has been it around sucks. there. But yeah, I mean, you always miss the one thing that everybody wants, and you're like, damn it. <laughs> you know, and it's already in production. You've already paid for all the tooling. I just think, really I just think the the way that it came out, like when we did the the Ford booth at um Oh, no, yeah, when we did the Ford booth at CES, that's when they, which was what, four years ago, Chris, four or five for imagination. What was that? Oh, that was that was uh, Jaguar Land Rover. Oh no, no, no! I did something with you. Never mind. It was with imagination. But I thought yeah. you guys provided. Yeah, uh, we did it. Okay. Um, the uh, Hubie was my programmer on that, and yes. that was when the MA three was announced, and that was like four or five years ago, right? 
So now it's been four or five years and they're finally coming out with the software for the console that they announced. I don't know if it was four or five years. It yeah, I think it was three. Yeah, yeah, I think it was three. Hold on, I have a wave. Five. It might've been three years, unless, it, unless it was one of the first prototypes that we had gotten to try out. Well, it wasn't, it was announced. It wasn't produced. Yeah. It was, they had that, that issue. Yeah, um, we, we we had a number of prototypes in our hands. It was for quite 2018. A while. It was 2018. It was January yeah, three of years. Yeah, three years ago. Yeah. So you know, I mean, there's a reason why, like, fifteen hundred dollars in hardware costs fifty thousand dollars, right? Or two thousand, or three thousand, five thousand dollars in hardware costs fifty thousand dollars, is because of all of those complicated, challenging things, right? That's Hubie. Uh, <laughs> Looks like freaking Dave Ambrosio. <laughs> He's amazing. Love that dude. All right, I gotta go. I gotta start driving to Vegas. So I'll talk to you. I gotta go too. I don't have to drive to Vegas, but I gotta go. Good to I see you. Nice to see everyone. Week, oh, amazing to see you with my friends next week. Okay. Bye. See you next week. Bye. Chris. Bye.